Greetings, adventurers, and welcome to Skill Tree, where we learn how to do just about everything. This morning, I don't, I don't have a fun drink for you. It's, it's 6 a.m. Why do they still make 6 a.m.? Holy unpleasant. Anyway, speaking of drinks, I've made a plethora of drinking vessels on this show so far. Honestly, more than these, I'm missing a few. The problem with all of these, barring maybe this one, but I'm not sure, uh, is the fact that they can't hold hot liquids. The way I cured most of them and waterproofed them was with wax, and it just isn't conducive to hot liquids. It's gonna melt. And that has been my white whale, for I do love a good, like, coffee or tea in the morning, and having a nice, in-character vessel would be great. At least it's been a problem until today. Because I just so happen to have more of these gourds here from when I did this water bottle project. You can watch that video up here if you're interested. And while I was researching different projects, I I could do with this, I came across these little guys here. These are the cups that are traditionally used for a South American drink called yerba mate, a hot drink. And it turns out the material that's made of, same exact kind of gourd, a calabash. So that's what we're doing today. We're gonna transform this gourd into a nice drinking vessel for my hot liquids of life. So without much further ado, let's jump right into it and level up the skill. Now, as I said, I had one of these calabash gourds left over from when I did that water bottle project. These are super cheap on Amazon. I'll leave you an affiliate link below. And there's like an infinite amount of things you can do with it. People make like birdhouses and lanterns and all types of crap. Just Google gourd art and you're gonna see a bunch of cool ideas. Anyways, one of the first things you gotta do while working with these things is to take out all the seeds that are inside. Luckily, since these are gonna be cups instead of like bottles where you only have a small opening in the top, I can actually just take a wood saw and cut this sucker right in half at the neck. This gives me these really large openings that I can use to simply pour those seeds out into a bowl. And if you have a green thumb, apparently these gores are fairly easy to grow. So definitely keep those seeds and just throw them in your garden at some point. Now you're gonna wanna go back inside with some kind of a scraping device and get out all that dried pith, which comes out like a dusty, papery material. So in the rim area that I'm actually gonna be drinking from, I kinda wanted to like decorate it up and seal it a little bit with something more substantial. And I just so happen to have this two inch round ring that fits right over the top there. Though that ring was just kinda slightly larger than that opening, so I wanted to widen it up a little bit. To do that, I just kinda put it on my sander and immediately threw it across the room. It was dumb, it was a dumb moment, especially cause these are actually quite fragile, so like, I was kind of freaking out a little bit. But trying again with a better grip, I was able to reduce this down so that that ring fit cleanly over it with a little bit of a rim showing around. The reason I left that little bit of a rim around the ring is because I want to make an indentation of some sort so that ring can sit into it and really make a good positive seal. To do that, I just went around it with my Dremel and sanded in this circular indentation all the way around. You don't have to use a Dremel, this stuff works just like wood, so you can totally use some kind of a chisel or a file or something. But the Dremel is just super precise and really quick. Doing this left me with the perfect little indentation for my ring to sit into. All right, so the original intention here was just to use the bottom part like a large drinking vessel, as you can see. I like my larger coffee cups of some sort. But while I was looking at it, I realized that that smaller top portion made a perfect little cup shape. So I figured while I was doing one, it'd be kind of fun to start making a small cup to go along with it. So I just went ahead and nipped off the stem and then used a piece of sandpaper on my table to flatten that bottom a bit. And look at this is already looking like a really cute little cup. Unfortunately, I can't use that same ring trick for the top because the ring was just too bulky and a little bit too wide. So I came up with something a little fun I think you're gonna like. Have you ever seen like those Viking torques or like the Viking kind of metal weave bracelets? I've been wanting to make one of those for a while and I've looked up a bunch of video on how it's made. So I'd figure I'd use one of the techniques here that they use to make the initial strands. Basically, I just busted out some of this 14 gauge steel wire and cut three pieces of equal length. I stuck the ends of those pieces into my bench vise, and on the other end, I stuck those into my drill chuck. Then I simply pulled the trigger and let everything twist together into this tight little braid. This gives us this really pretty look, and it's crazy simple to do. From there, all I had to do was bend it around into a circle until it fit right over the top of my cup. Then I cut away all that overlap to form a ring. It was a little hard to get that circle perfect the first time, but the second time, I was really pleased with how good this whole thing came out. This is gonna look super slick rimming the top of the cup here. As a fun little editing side note, I noticed that while I was showing you the rings in that picture, I like immediately changed shirts. So fast. It's just because a day had passed and I needed some rest from going over my bench because my back was starting to hurt. My regular day job has me sitting for a long time and then this editing and I find my back has really been hurting lately. Luckily with today's sponsor, FlexiSpot, that's a thing of the past. You see what I did there? It was all a setup. 
for a sponsorship. Seriously though, Flexi Spot is a company that sells desks. It sells like those uh, adjustable desks so you can stand up or sit down or whatever. And I, I genuinely love this thing. They sent me the Pro Plus Standing Desk E7 to check out. And I'll tell you straight up, I won't do a sponsorship on a thing I don't believe in, a thing I don't like. This is a really, really good desk. It's adjustable, so I can seamlessly go from a sitting to a standing position, saving my back throughout the course of the day. And how smooth it transitions from the other one, it's just one of those things that are like satisfying to do. I love just pushing the button and feeling it move. It's the little things, I guess. I was also really impressed with just how sturdy this desk is. Or as high as I can get it in the comically tall setting, at least for me. Seriously, at its tallest, I feel like a child, like, trying to get his mother's attention. It's so tall. But it's rock solid up there. It's crazy. Now, it is a bit of an investment, but this bad boy comes with a 30-day risk-free return policy and a 15-year warranty. So if you try it and it's not for you, there's no risk. Just return the thing. But honestly, for me, being able to change that position throughout the day has been saving my back. It really has. They also have all these cool accessories you can add to the desk. You can customize it and make it yours. If you have any interest in this type of a desk or changing your office situation, definitely check them out. I'll leave the link in the description below. Okay, so back to it. Normally, when I cut like a little ring of some sort like that, I would try to solder those ends together to make it one continuous piece. But I have a bit of an idea for those cuffs that I think is kind of nifty and will hide that anyways. Basically, I thought it would be cool if rather than just being a little cup, it would be like a cauldron, have tiny little legs to stand on. I just thought it would be neat. So I busted out some of this aluminum flat stock so that I can use it to make my little cauldron legs. I just cut a length roughly six inches long and filed down one edge so it wasn't just flat. That end was then bent at an extreme angle using a pair of pliers. Thought here is I could just position that bend over the lip of the cup, helping to hold that ring in place and generally just give it this kind of cool look. Next, I proceeded to bend the aluminum so that it better fit the contours of my cup before cutting off the excess and then bending the very end of it to become my feet. By doing this three times, I was able to make these little legs for my cup to stand on. At this point, that small cup was unexpected, so I'm just kind of having fun with it, doing whatever I want. Happy with that, I did the same thing I did with the larger half of the gourd, sanding a little ring into place for that twisted wire to sit into. Now to actually hold those rings into place on top of the lip, I decided to use a food safe silicone. The problem is the little tube I had of the stuff was old and half of it was completely solid. So I had to take some scissors and just kind of nip away at the corner of it so I had a space to apply it. With that good to go, I made a small bead of silicone all around the rim of my cup and then sat that little ring into place. Then I did the same thing with the larger gourd, sealing my ring to the top and making sure all the silicone was nice and clean around the edges. This did a great job sealing everything up and really bonded those rings to the surface of the gourd. Now to attach those little legs to that cup, I first roughed up the aluminum a bit where it would make contact with the gourd. Then I just used this two-part epoxy, which I put onto the aluminum and then bonded the two pieces together. Doing this three times left me with this fancy little cauldron of a cup. I think it's gonna be crazy fun to decorate. Thought was maybe to like carve some cool runes into those legs or something. I don't know, there's a bunch of stuff you can do with that shape. Before I started decorating these things any further though, I noticed that there was this little bit of a rim showing around that ring that was kind of making me feel like it was unfinished. It just didn't have a good look to me. So to fix that, I took my Dremel and I made two little holes right where that ring connects to the lip. Then I grabbed some aluminum wire, which is really easy to bend and fed it through one of those holes. This left me with a good anchor so I could bend that wire tightly around the ring. Once I got all the way around, I cut off the excess and fed the other end through the second hole. Then I worked that wire as tightly as I could around the bottom of that ring. To really make sure it stayed tight and that it would stay connected, I used the same trick as before, putting the ends of that wire into my drill chuck and carefully drilling it so that the wire tightened down and locked itself into place. Then I just cut away all the excess. To hide the spot where those two pieces of wire died into the gourd, I just busted out this little concho here and used some hot glue on the back of it so I could have fixed it into place right where those pieces of wires went inside. And I'm really proud of that little addition. It looks super slick and it bulked up that top in a really satisfying way. Okay, so on decorating these suckers, I thought it would be a lot of fun to play with something that I saw recently on Instagram, actually. So behold, the Scorch Marker Pro. Basically, the way this thing works is you can draw on anything that will burn, like wood or the gourds. In my case here, I'm just kind of drawing a simple spiral to test it out. Once it's done, you let that liquid that comes out of the marker dry. 
It dries completely clear, but once you hit it with a heat gun, check out how cool that is! It burns only in the spots where the marker's drawn in. I learned you can also do this with the chemical ammonium chloride, which you can get on Amazon. In fact, that's probably what's in those markers. They're probably just full of an ammonium chloride mixture. But all you have to do is dissolve the ammonium chloride powder in some water, and it'll do the exact same thing. But I thought this was really cool. So I just went ahead and continued my design all the way around the bottle. I will say I did have some trouble though with the heat gun and scorching the gourd itself a little more than I meant to. It left me with a few of these kind of darker brown areas, but I'm okay with it. I think it just makes it look more rustic and kind of old. Now for the cup, while I was working on this little spiral design, I was texting Maddie being like, draw me a design, something fun. So she made me this little lotus design here to put on them. I then took that and did the best I could to draw that onto my little cup here. Now as the cup is kind of extra, I thought it'd be fun to do something extra with it. So instead of burning this one into place, I busted out some of this gold leaf adhesive and used it to trace all around the design I had drawn. Then I grabbed some of this silver leaf here and placed it on top of the design. Using a soft bristle brush, I then pushed that leaf into the adhesive and brushed away any of the excess silver. I love using silver or gold leaf because it's like magic. As you brush away all that extra material, you're left with the design underneath and it's just, it's so cool. I also went back in with an awl just to clean up all my lines and make it look crisp. Then for an extra splash of color, I used a dark blue marker to fill in those flower petals. And look at how freaking cute this little cup is turning out. Now before I get ahead of myself with these projects, I wanted to test them out. As you saw, this thing went flying across the room when I used the sander and it's been dropped a few times so either of these pieces could have little hairline cracks in them and it might just not work as a vessel. So I wanted to put some water in them to see if it would actually work. Before I do that though, I want to seal the outside a bit to make sure it doesn't leave like water spots or anything. To do that, I have some of this butcher block oil and stain that should help protect the outside as well as just darken it slightly. I just used a dauber to spread it all over the outsides, let it soak in for a moment, and then wiped all the excess away. This only slightly darkened it, but left everything with a really pleasant sheen. Okay, so the next step was to test it with some water, but it also is part of the curing process. You see, by adding hot water into it, all the flesh that's left, the really small stuff you couldn't get to, becomes kind of like a mush that you can scrape away with a spoon. So I just kind of let the water sit in there, making sure it didn't leak out from anywhere and giving it time to do its work on the insides. After about 10 minutes, I brought the spoon in and started scraping the sides carefully to get all that pulp out. This is when a little catastrophe struck me. I don't know what happened, but for some reason, my epoxy decided that it wasn't truly stuck and completely let go of the cup. It turns out for whatever reason, the resin just didn't actually cure. Like I was able to wipe it away after the fact. No idea what happened. I've never had that happen before. But I decided to just kind of roll with it because honestly, I kind of like this simpler look better. Like the other thing was kind of a neat, fun idea I was throwing against the wall, but this is kind of cool just as it is. Not only that, but it gives me this neat little look. This weeble wobbles, but it won't fall down. Well, especially when there's liquid inside of it, which is kind of neat. It's like those round bottom whiskey glasses that kind of do the same thing. So I like that. That was cool. Anyways, the hot water did its work and I was able to scrape away all of this pulp from the inside, leaving just kind of the shell without any of the, the junk inside, really clean on both these pieces. This is when I made a realization when looking at this project though, because something just wasn't sitting right with me. Although extra, this little cup turned out cute. Looks like a little tiny, like a teacup or whatever. I was originally thinking of it like maybe a shot cup of some sort, but it's a cute little teacup. This bad boy here though, it's it's really big, which again is fine, but it doesn't have like a handle. And I just think it, it might be a little awkward for it to be just a solo drinking cup. Possible I can, but still. But that's when I realized what these two look like together. This looks like a little tea set, a little teapot, a little cup. It's perfect. So I figured the thing to do would be to make a little spout right here in the ring. So to do that, I just used my Dremel with a carbide bit and carved a little channel to direct the water through. This helps make it actually pour like a teapot into the cup rather than just kind of dribbling off the side. It works perfectly. I'm super excited about it. All right, come on this journey with me. This is how I envision this thing working. First, you take your tea, in this case, some tasty chrysanthemum and throw it into your pot. Then, of course, you add your hot water and you use your little cup as a lid while you wait for your tea to seep. Then once you're ready, you simply pour your tea into the cup and enjoy. The spell worked perfectly. It was actually even big enough to let the little flowers come through without weird spillage or anything. 
This little thing is so freaking cute. It's perfect. It's a perfect little little tea set. The outside doesn't get too hot at all when it's full of water. The little little detail I added here is actually perfect as a little thumb holds for when you're pouring it. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I just like it when things turn out this way. When you've originally set off to do one thing, and then you kind of look back at it, and the thing itself tells you, like, no, that's not what I am. I'm this thing. Just giving it its space to be what it is and to kind of feel that out and, and agree, like, yeah, you're right. You know what? You're just better this way. I don't know. There's some kind of magic to the process. There's a point in which you and the materials are kind of talking to each other in this way, and I, it just feels like such a cool part of the creative process. I know, I guess what I'm saying is if you're working on something right now or if you run into something in the future where you're like, this isn't coming out right. Maybe you're right. Maybe it isn't coming out right for the purpose you thought it should be. But maybe if you kind of step back a little bit, squint at it sideways some, you're going to find out that it's better as something else. Anyways, I hope you liked this episode. If you did, why don't you give me some of that like it love and don't forget to subscribe so you know when I release new content. In the meantime, though, keep leveling up, you. You made it to the end screen. YouTube loves it when you do that. It is a great way to support this channel. Another great way to support this channel is by joining these people's noble ranks. These are our Patreon members, and honestly, this channel could not run without them. Their generosity makes it possible for us to get all the materials we need to make all of this cool stuff. And a special shout out to our newest high tier level Patreon member, guy named Tom. Hey Tom, welcome to the family. If you like what we do here and want to support us as well, consider joining our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, you can click on one of these videos here and that'll support us too. While you figure out which one, I'm gonna go make some tea in my adorable little teapot. Love this thing. Thanks for watching.